Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Today we're going to be running some more missions in the Marshall. Today we're going to be doing a mission called Rogue Drone Harassment. So there are some rogue drones that have been attacking the mining convoys of the Scope. So the Marshall is going to go there, enforce some law in the system of Heora, and take out these rogue drones who have been wrecking havoc for those innocent miners. Those innocent poor miners! And we're using the polarized uh, Marshall 1.8k DPS with Rage. Got a whopping 17k EHP tanks. This is the perfect ship to gank if you want to gank a nice, juicy 7.6 billion isk ship. You're gonna want to go for this one 70.5k EHP. Two tornadoes is all it takes. Boop! You're gone directly. <laughs> We've got a cloaking device here to aid a little bit and also an MJD, which will maybe help a little bit to avoid gankers if we need to just get out of there quick. But obviously an organized gank will take us out real fast. So we're here just relying on the negligence and the low population of the local system that we get through this and don't lose and give a fat kill mail to someone. <laughs> okay, let's get in here. Let's take out these rogue drones. In this mission, uh, this is an interesting mission because rogue drones in general they don't have particularly like they they usually have good loot from the rogue drone elite ai it's what uh, they that module is something that drops for many rogue drones and it can sometimes it used to go for a good price like three million plus but it's gone down a bit in price it's got, price has been going up and down up and down so it's a little bit all over the place but re last time i did a re mission involving rogue drones that dropped elite drone ai uh, they got quite a bit of uh, the, uh, like the price was a lot lower than I recalled so let's see if it's the case here okay so we've got this Kai's mother drone and I think I go for this one so what I'm gonna do here is approach this and use my MJD to just get real close reload the rage we're gonna go with Mjolnir rage because rogue drones have the lowest resistance in the EM department in this case this one is a bit of an exception because what I was trying to say here is that certain rogue drones behave slightly differently than the typical rogue drones. This is one of them that doesn't behave typically. And I don't think this one drops elite drone AI. And if it does, definitely the ones that come after this will not be dropping elite drone AI, that kind of good loot. Uh, it's just strange. So some rogue drones they do, some do not. And that's just the way it works. You know, they don't want to give out too much elite drone AI. And I'm guessing, you know, it's good because the price will be too little. But on the other hand, uh, not getting your elite drone AI is a bit sad sometimes because they've got pretty crap bounties you can see here. We have got a very good shield boost here on this on this ship right here. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. maybe we do not want to shoot this because we're spawning waves. But okay, we took that guy out anyway. Let's see. You now we can maybe go and see if there's anything in here. We'll switch over to Mjolnir Javelin because these guys have lowest in the EM. Look here, they've got lowest in the EM. So let's pull range and snipe these guys. Snipe these guys off the grid. We can pull a little bit of range here. Stop boosting. We don't need to boost anymore. Just kill these guys. Kill these guys. Should be pretty simple. I can put some precision script because they're pretty close for our javelin. And if they get too close, the frigates, then I can always webify them because of the sick web range of the marshal. It's really good. I wish this... I keep saying this over and over again, but I wish there was a cheaper... The, the Marshall was a bit cheaper uh, so that I could actually use it without being too worried about getting ganked because there's really no reason not to gank this ship. It's just such an expensive ship. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a 6-7 bill kill mail on their, on their Z-kill, you know? And it's a pretty easy ship to gank as well just because of it having naturally a pretty low EHP per second. I mean, the polarized fit we're using doesn't help, obviously, <laughs> but still, it's a pretty... Like, very very flimsy ship for what you are paying i personally speaking i hope that ccp releases a marauder variant of the concord ships that'll be so nice a concord maraud and i think that'll make a lot of sense in fact because the, the concord they're like the police force right so they're supposed to go around enforcing law and marauders are like specifically made for l4 missions which is seems like a very natural thing that okay since l4 missions are kind of enforcing law you know you often kill a lot of pirates in l4 missions so then i think it would make sense that you have a marauder variant of the marshal i think that's really good if they did because i think this ship looks absolutely amazing one of the best looking ships in the game in fact there are ships i think that maybe look a little bit better than this but it's one in my opinion this is up there this is a, one of those really good looking ships not only the model but i also think that just the general appearance of the ship the blue color i, I tend to like blue colored ships uh this is a pretty cool one i think uh, so it's just 
I think it's a generally speaking a very cool ship and I think that they should expand on the Concord line of ships make them more accessible and like what I mean I don't mean make them paper cheap but what I mean is that make them like not stupid stupid expensive that they're even for the people who can afford them it's not even worth flying because of the gank risk let's web fly this guy we can web him look at that 22 kilometer web range and I could have even more if I had black ops to level 4 or 5 I've got only level 3 so this is what happens when you have just level 3 it will have much more longer web range with higher level of black ops it would be really cool if you had a marauder variant of the like a concord marauder because it would have like bonuses to every single type of a weapon system so you could have anything on it you can have you know the water cannons you can have the torpedoes like we've got now we can have the pulse lasers like the paladin anything and you could also tank it in any way and i can imagine well i think that if it were to have a concord marauder it'll be a bit more expensive than the normal road marauders maybe like i don't know 30 40 percent more expensive but i don't think it should be like the way here it's like it's cost six times more than the average uh, the average black ops it's just uh, to me that feels very just ridiculous it's just way too much okay let's slap these guys and something that i think there's also makes a lot of sense by having a concord marauder is that by having a concord marauder it'll make a lot of sense with the concord's natural bonuses the concord ships they have like a bonus or at least the marshal does is that it has this thing where you get more bonus of armor pair rate and shield boost rate for security status and you also get more of this kind of uh, the so-called like uh, security status bonuses from destroying pirates so when you kill pirates you usually get a bit of better security status so like if i look here show info you can see here i've got security status 5.0 and if i kill npcs i get more of that security status the max is 5.0 this would make sense because if you're if you're in a ship like a marauder marauders are made to do l missions kill npcs so they would make sense that you know yeah you have a ship that is made to kill npcs and you'll get better tank the more better your security status is and also you'll get more security status by using it because that's one good thing about the marshal is that you know if you want to get good security status you'll use this because you get increased amounts of extra security status by killing npcs in the marshal compared to any other ship it's just an inherent bonus that it has which i think is is pretty cool but it's weird at the same time because this ship is not made really for at all for pve it's made for pvp black ops completely a pvp related activity not at all a pve activity so i don't know really why they did this but that's just the, what ccp decided to do it would make a lot more sense in my opinion if they went with some some kind of uh, marauder variant instead Okay, let's approach this elite drone parasite. See if there's maybe some loot in here. We can do an MJD cycle here to go to this this uh, wreck here. Maybe there is an elite drone AI in it. We can see if it's worth anything. We did some pretty decent DPS right there. We had some pretty good range too, 69 kilometers. Good application with the javelin. And even though we've just got javelin, we have what is this like 1.1k DPS? That's pretty good DPS. And with rage we would have even more but we didn't really need to use rage here because there was mainly small stuff and also there was quite a lot of stuff so i just wanted to be a little bit further away oh there we go elite drone ai but only 1.5 million it's gone in the past for like 3 million or something like that so the price is still don't seem to have changed let's go through the acceleration gate right here another bad thing about the black ops battleships is they're heavy boys they're heavy boys i've shown you this before in a previous video where look at the weight this thing weighs like 200 million kilos compared to a typical battleship that weighs like 90 80 uh, uh, million kilos so these are very fat boys i think it has a lot to do with they've got a you know jump drive so i'm guessing that the jump drive makes it so that you know you have the way that weighs them down a lot because if we're going a whopping 700 meters a second with our blinged mwd over here uh, that's a bit of very slow very 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 slow that's an afterburner cruiser right here and it's an afterburner slow cruiser the gila goes this speed and it's a pretty slow cruiser let's turn make a little turn here <laughs> the fat marshal turning around it's also a pretty big ship just just due to the actual size compared to your average battleship it's 1.8 kilometers long uh, the, the apocalypse which is one of the biggest ships in the game is 1.5 kilometers long 
the practice is two kilometers long but it i think it's a bit of cheating because it's basically got these antennae that go really far like your spikes it's not really the actual ship itself so it doesn't feel that big this is more like the whole bo body of this is 1.8 kilometers long so it is a pretty massive ship if you compare it to other ships like the other day with my friend i was just doing a mission with this concord uh, battleship uh, and he was in a paladin and i looked pretty massive compared to his paladin <laughs> it's a it's a pretty uh, monstrous ship okay so we've got the npcs here we'll switch over to the rage me on your rage cruise a little bit to the side and get to work get to work okay we can even use a bit of a weapon fire because these guys are in range activate our auto targeter let's see now what is that yes look here these drones now the, it was only that mother drone that was a bit of an exception these guys are uh, 40 percent in the em so it's like the lowest resistance and we can do a little bit of a pulse here on our shield booster which you know, gives us really good shielding because of our good security status the concord in general is a really good or the concord uh, battleship has just got so good tank it's really good to get a good nice active rep even though the buff is naturally not so big it's got a pretty good active tank and that's very useful when you're in the missions because that's really all that matters you don't uh, the buffer tanks really are just unnecessary in missions you want to just have a nice burst tank when there's a lot of dps on the grid and then as soon as that dps is off the grid you go to work and uh, just uh, kill everything or and give your shield booster a rest uh, okay good 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 see now why is the range now is there any gank is in range i have to be vigilant on my d scan i don't want to get a a gank fleet on my tail <laughs> let's let's orbit these guys a bit we'll move towards these cruisers in fact if we can use our mwd it's just really nice this shield booster does half our shields basically we've got 6k total shields we do almost 3k in one of these cycles right here it's really nice I can only if I rep now. It's basically gonna over rep anyway, so I just wait until it's half shields until I do a repair uh, cycle. But we have some pretty decent application right there. I knocked out that cruiser very fast, and it was a cruiser, and I'm using rage. That was pretty pretty damn fast. Okay, wrecked. Okay, good, good, good. We finished the mission. Let's return to our mission agent and hand in the mission. This is a very simple mission, and I remember before, like a long time ago. When I was pretty new to missions, uh, there were, I, I've heard a lot of people say, Oh, Elite John AI, you get so much good stuff from it, right? But uh, it, the, this, and I was just thinking, okay, it's rogue drones. But you see here, none of these guys are dropping Elite John AI. It was only that one NPC there in the beginning that dropped Elite John AI. There is, in fact, another one, another mission. I forgot what it's called now, but there's another mission. You guys could probably correct me in the comment section below. That has a bunch of rogue drones that drop elite drone AI, but it is not this one. I got confused because I thought that it was this one because it's got, you know, rogue drone harassment. Obviously, you would have rogue drones here, right? Yes, but it's not the ones that have elite drone AI. We're not against the elite rogue drones. We're only against the scrubby rogue drones here. <laughs> Let's dock here and refuel our marshal. Get, uh, get the shields up and... Something that was unfortunate the other day is that I took a bit of an armor damage because I was in a pol I'm in the polarized fit. It's got you know a very bad buffer. So even if I look, don't look at the screen for a few seconds, then uh, I I can lose a lot of shields. And the thing is, what happened? I like I uh, just looked at the other monitor because I was just reading something about another mission, and then I went there. Uh, like I was just staring at the the just like oh this mission objective okay give me this give me this okay okay it, I literally just gone maybe like ten seconds right my whole shield just went down all the way and I even took armor damage now here's the thing you guys who have seen that video think oh you're just telling me what's happening in the other video well this is something I didn't tell you guys the this tiny speck of armor damage I had lost I think because you see here I have six k HP armor right. So I think I took maybe a few hundred HP armor damage. I was like five point something HP at least. So barely anything. I don't even think more than a thousand HP or damage I took. I went to see, do the repair bill, right? That repair bill was eight million isk. What the heck? Eight million isk just for that tiny little like scratch of my armor. It was so tiny and I was just eight million isk. And 
Okay, yeah, you rich guys are probably going to say to me, oh, it's so oh, you're such a peasant, 8 million. I don't mean that like 8 million is a lot to me. I mean, 8 million is not a whole lot to me. I can get that quite easily. But what I'm trying to say is, I would never have expected such a tiny little scratch to be worth 8 million isk. That's the point. It felt like I was getting ripped off by the station services right here. So what I did was, in fact, the, the I, I, I undocked, right? I undocked and I was looking for a citadel because in citadels you get you know free repairing i was looking here let's go there. okay let's go look up a citadels oh look there's there's like three citadels which i have access to because this one here i can't go to so this one right here and in fact every single one they don't have a quantum core and these quantum core things they're like relatively new so not it doesn't seem like everyone's installed them so they make it so that if you don't have it i think that i'm now I'm not too familiar because i'm not a big structure guy but if you don't have a quantum core, these kind of services like repair shop, I think even market don't work, clone bay, etc. So they didn't have a quantum core, I couldn't repair. So what the heck am I supposed to do? Well, this is a good thing that I had packed a armor repair in the inventory. So that's a good thing. If you guys are in a really expensive ship and you lose a bit of like armor structure damage and you're like, oh, this repair bill is so much. So a good thing could be to have a structure repair or an armor repair lying around because you could just repair it. So I just did that, undocked, did a few cycles of an armor repair and I got the whole repair bill for free. Saved myself 8 million isk. It took me only just a few seconds to equip an armor repair and get it repaired. So that was a little bit of a side story right there in the, in the Marshall. It's a pretty expensive ship and gets expensive repairs people are like oh you can give us that fancy ship we're gonna charge you extra <laughs> okay hope you guys enjoyed this video right here a little bit of rogue joint harassment a little bit of story of expensive repair bills in the marshall uh, again this is just an amazing looking ship i really like the look of the ship but i don't think i'm going to be running this for a whole lot longer just because of the gank risk the stress and it's not something which i am a big fan of in elf missions having a having to watch my back to as, as vigilantly as i am when i pilot the marshal if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe as always i'll catch you guys later